one dude that said, I was like, if, if this podcast was in Nigeria, it would still do very well. I still do very Oh, you can't do, well, you know, uh, 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 it, it wouldn't do very well. I'm like, bro, like, pe- people are people. Mm-hmm. P- if you can swing the bat, it don't matter if you're Nigerian, you're African American, exactly. you're Jamaican. If you're good, you're good. You know, but people want to feel like your group don't have issues. Everybody else's group have issues. We all got issues, right? And the reason why we have a problem in this whole Pan-Africanism, you know, uh, 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 kerfuffle, if you would say, because we just have people that believe like, oh, so it's the African-Americans that's committing the crimes and the murders, but it never nobody else. Until we come to where y'all live. Hi guys, welcome to Kenganda. My name is Janita Maya and this is the Repart Podcast. I'll let um, the lady next to me introduce herself. Hi, Tina. Okay, Tina. Yeah. Hi guys, Outta Brian here. Nice to be here. O'Shea Duke Jackson, Sacramento, California. Let's get into it. Okay, the energy is down, but I hope it gets hey, no, we're here. We're here. <laughs> <laughs> it's we're like everybody's like, everybody started something. But yeah, guys, so a certain lady in Jamaica says she will no longer rent her property to black Americans. Watch this video with us and react to it with us. African people stay here, have Jamaican people stay here, have white people stay here, have Spanish people stay here, and have black Americans stay here. I'm not saying not all black Americans are bad, but the ones that came to my place have been nothing but problem. Only two good ones came here, all of them. Fight late at night, not with me, with each other. They're disrespectful, they're entitled, they're un- unappreciative. And it is that way because America has spoiled them and give them so much free shit. Where they think they could come to Jamaica and get the free, same free shit out here and be nasty about it. I'm not saying all of you are like that. But because of that, I'm not risking my health and my happiness for people. No short-term stay. No short-term stay. It's not going to happen here. I'd rather eat salt and banana and let goats and cows live into my houses than have people come and stress me. I will not hate my business because of customers. A lot of business people are miserable because of some kind of customer. Not this place. I don't want my place. is drama free. She says that black Americans are disrespectful entitled when it comes to our property they fight mm. with each other mm-hmm. and whatnot so she says she'd rather eat salt with a banana than rinse <laughs> her cabin out to an african-american again mm. no can shit, i I'm can safe. i start this off please mm-hmm. did y'all see that oh on that video <laughs> i'm like i don't know what to say because she's trying to like you know what is she trying to do is she trying to like is she like an IG model? Because she looked good. I mean. Yeah, she looks good. Cool. Yeah, she was bending all over and everything like that. Like, Shout out to Jamaican people. Hey. Hey. Yeah. 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 Now you're happy. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, let me get, kind of get back to the yeah. to the whole point. Okay, uh, so she's saying that, and this is the first time I've heard this. There was a lady that moved to Tanzania that was a Jamaican-American, and she was saying that the most people that give her the pro- most problems are African-Americans. Um, now what I would like to know, because a lot of times it's difficult because she uses the terms loosely black Americans. Yeah. So now who are black Americans? Mm -hmm. That's now what do we say now? It could be, you know, we we could have some kind of equal, it could equal what we think is African Americans or could it be, let's say, a Jamaican American that lives in Jam- that, that is coming over, because a lot of times, let's say you know you have Haitian Americans, right? And then if Haitian Americans do something, or if like a Nigerian American does something, but it's it's really not even Nigerian Americans. It's most likely guys in the Caribbean, but they grow up like us, they talk like us, so you can identify. Okay, that's a Black American that, they, and technically they are, but now. Are you saying black people from America? Or are you talking about a particular lineage of black Americans? So when she says that, we're thinking about, oh, you're talking about people like me. Yeah. But it could be that some of them people are like, hey, where are you from? I'm from, I'm from Houston, uh, you know, but that person could be a Liberian. So we, we don't know. But I would say that if that is the if that is the case in Jamaica, why don't we hear that from like, Let's say Ghana, you know, because if that if that was the real issue, yeah, 
And if it was just, you know, these particular black Americans, then how did your return get what it was? Now, I'm not saying that it can't happen because, yeah, it can. Yeah. Like after like we could tear up your shit like anybody else. Right. That's true. But I think the context is important. Who are these individuals Mm -hmm. and are they when you say black Americans, it's very loosely. You know what I mean? And if that is the case, why don't we hear like, okay, and African Americans have been going, or black Americans have been going to Ghana for like over 40 years. I've never heard a Ghanaian real estate person say that. But I, I would just say this, you know, um, it's unfortunate because, yes, African Americans or black Americans, however you want to define people from America, they can't come there, they can fight. But um, when you put out a video like that, mm. it causes that, you know, FBA versus ADOS war. Yeah. You know, you get these people feeling like, you know, like, you know, like Jamaicans don't make mistakes. Mm-hmm. When we know, and if you was in the 80s and 90s in the shower posse, listen, Jamaicans was tearing up a lot of shit in black America, mm-hmm. but it's not right to generalize all Jamaicans that was tearing up shit because it was all in Philadelphia, all in L.A. There was beefing with the Crips, you know what I mean, rolling 60s and everything, all in New York City. But that's just... That don't mean that's all Jamaicans, right? So I think that we got to be careful with the language that we use. But that's just for me, me for now. But she, she, she look good. I'm, I'm <laughs> serious. Man. Yeah. Well, there's that. I, I would like to hear from Miss Anti Blackness. Oh anti-blackness. yeah. Like, how did you know I was gonna say? It? Yeah. <laughs> so basically, it's anti black. It's just yes. stupid. And I don't even think she means what she's saying. Mm-hmm. The way you were distracted by the Nyash, I think that was the intention of the video. Right! But with something <laughs> controversial to get people talking. Yeah. Yeah, and it's promo for her resort because some people would find that appealing and be like, okay, okay. no black Americans, I'm going to mm-hmm. go there, like, whatever. But I felt like it was just dumb because she said, um, not all, but then she went on mm-hmm. to generalize. And yeah. so she's she, not gonna she just contradicted anymore. herself and she was literally talking about two people you know two right. human beings made her like form this opinion on like a group of people so no it's just dumb it's anti-black but i guess the mm. video did what it was supposed to do right because yeah. we're talking about it right now right so yeah yeah so she went ahead to expose Hanyash anyway <laughs> shout out to my jamaican people i know some jamaican really do you have some jamaican girls you know uh not really but i can speak jamaican Mm-hmm. You can give yeah. us a sample. The Bombo cla- oh <laughs> wait, 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 no, 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 no. I'm still <laughs> continuing. That's just a start. Okay. Me na bombo kula rasta man with the first them few na film a rumor, but blood clot. Uh huh. you in Jamaica? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Happened. No, I'm Jamaican, and uh, yeah. Man, that was trash. <laughs> Isn't that like patwa? Is it? Do they call it patwa? Yeah, patwa. I think it's patwa. Yeah. Blood yeah. clot. But it's better than me, though. I can't do that. That's real Jamaican, and I wouldn't expect you to understand. <laughs> it's, only, it's only Jamaicans who done this. Anyway, so mo- ca- moving back to the video, mm-hmm. I feel like the way she she expressed her, her view, of course, we all go through certain some experiences. Now, for her, I believe more it was more of a personal, just because things happen. But the way she brought it out, eh? I'm mm. not. Uh, it, it wasn't. It wasn't the right man because she she talks of a large, a larger community, mm-hmm. just because of just a few individuals. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm, so she brought it out like the, as if it's all black, mm-hmm. black Americans. So she should have stuck to if it was a few individuals, she would have stuck to them. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then another thing, what I also find strange, it's always um, blacks are always calling out blacks. Mm. I, I, I don't know what that is. I've noticed. Mm-hmm. It's t- it, on a rare basis. If they are whites, I, I don't think she would have ranted like the way she's ranting for the what? Mm. For the blacks. So I also feel like as blacks, we are so quick to call out our mm. fellow fellow blacks and put them put them like on the spot. But it's more instead of. I believe there was a better way she sh- she she could have what raised her view without. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah, generalizing, but hey, anyone is entitled anyway. To yeah, win. yeah. Let me yeah. let me let me say this. If I want to go and I look at that video in the comment section, mm-hmm. you're gonna have a lot of Caribbeans and Africans talking shit. I I know I I know what you Negroes do right, which is which is very interesting. I'm not trying to start no beef, but I mm. know that y'all. I'm serious. I'm gonna put it out there. I know y'all was talking shit 
about about black Americans, right? That one over there. I know y'all was talking shit. <laughs> God, I'm, let me tell you something. I know y'all was, right? Some of y'all. Because some of y'all going to be in this comment section talking shit. But I've noticed that the people who are in those little wars and shit, y'all are the same Negroes almost. <laughs> y'all won't help y'all particular group achieve a nothing. Because let me tell you this, right? If anybody really want to say that about each other, they can. You know I live here, right? If I ever decided that I really wanted to put it out there, the shit that I go through here every day, them saying, like the same people saying, yeah, that's what they do. Y'all be ready to kill me, right? Mm. But the situation is this. I don't know why every group feels like, you know, my group is more holier than that. I, I see that all the time. Like, mm -hmm. especially with some of the Nigerian commenters and the Ghanaian commenters, you know, like, it's like y'all can do no wrong or whatever, right? And then some of the African Americans too. We be dealing with a whole lot of jigga sh in in all black communities. I, I see it all the time, not just ours, right? Like, I'm I'm just gonna be real. I see a lot of brothers like, oh yeah, our people don't operate like that until I come to y'all's country. <laughs> you know, I'm traveling all throughout Africa, right? So Y'all can't lie to me and say y'all not y'all not going through some of the same things that we going through or vice versa. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you know, we are just so much different. Like one dude that said, I was like, if, if this podcast was in Nigeria, it would still do very well. Still do very well. Oh, you can't do well, you know, uh, 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 it, it wouldn't do very well. I'm like, bro, like people are people. Mm -hmm. If you can swing the bat, it don't matter if you're Nigerian, you're African American, exactly. you're Jamaican. If you're good, you're good. You know, but people want to feel like your group don't have issues. Everybody else group have issues. We all got issues, right? And the reason why we have a problem in this whole Pan-Africanism, you know, a uh, 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 kerfuffle, if you would say, because we just have people that believe like, oh, so it's the African-Americans that's committing the crimes and the murders, but it never nobody else until we come to where y'all live. Like, if, <laughs> if, if you really want to be, if you really want to be honest, all somebody got to do is come to where you live, you come to where I live, then we're going to have that, we're going to, having the truth about each other mm -hmm. so we all need to understand that we need to fight against all the negative stereotypes about each other uh, yeah. like just nigerians are scammers no some are not everybody yeah right so we have to fight we have to fight against those negative stereotypes because we know that not everybody is participating in that fuckery yeah but what i see so often even in this is like yeah you doing this and then you're and then our people are not doing that and but you the same that won't do nothing for your people at all mm -hmm. you know you, you like your people can't depend on you to get no money from your mm -hmm. so this is what we got to stop and keep it real and just know like that type of stuff right there yeah. we got to really call that out yeah i definitely think she was wrong to generalize and put the whole community in one bracket yeah. mm. because i'm pretty sure like you say when jamaicans are also in the states i'm sure that some jamaicans have done something they be tearing up shit shady yeah and i don't i don't feel like some they, they give up on them or something like that. <laughs> I feel like she's giving up on a whole on a, a whole, whole community. community. She's just like, you know what? Everyone people. is trash. Has been nice we all need to get out, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of just letting it be like, oh, there are two, maybe there are two bad uh -huh. apples in the group. Yeah. You know, it's okay. I put the bad apples. Or maybe she can like put like a whole system to vet these people who are coming on and have rules and consequences if you do this and that. Instead of generalizing the whole thing and deciding, oh, you know what? This particular group of people will not come to my property no matter what. Right. Like I'm going to make she she went ahead like the fact that she went ahead to make a video and say you know what I am done with these people mm -hmm. just speaks a lot because like what did they do that was that bad? <laughs> I mean a few fights. She said oh they fought okay. What, what, what else did they do? I wish she gave us more context because right. the way she went all out to say you know what I'm done with these people. Yeah, those people look like her. And then she's she's willing and ready to go and embrace other races and other cultures. Like, oh, the other people are nice. Now, what happens if she meets a white person who is also bad? Now, she's is she going to cancel? Ban the white people. Is she, she going to cancel she can't all can't white people? Because, she can't. She'll never tell anyone. Because, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she does it. It, it, see, it doesn't at the end of the day it doesn't make sense like mm -hmm. for her to jump to such a drastic measure it doesn't make sense yet there's some things she could put in place for her to be accommodating of her people mm -hmm. it's like a family of course there's one person who's going to piss you off in the whole family it's like what are you going to do cut the whole thing off 
No, it's like you you know you learn you learn how to work with a with a family member and True. you you look for ways on how you people can come together and just be and enjoy life, you know. And also she's giving a bad rep to like Jamaica. So now if I'm let's say I'm not one, but let's say I was an African American mm. and I saw such a video, I would feel some type of way about Jamaica and think that maybe Jamaicans don't want me in that country mm-hmm. and that in itself would stop me at from looking at Jamaica as a potential tourist mm. destination because if one of your people says oh I don't deal with those people what if she just looks at you and then hears your accent and things oh, and she says she concludes that you're an African American then in her eyes you just it's tinted red like in her eyes it's tinted red like there's no way out it's mm. just like it's just you're done you know she's already judged you she's already concluded she already thinks you she knows what you're going to do mm-hmm. and how you're going to act like that prejudgment already in itself is not i don't think it's a good thing but yeah she just she was just doing the most honestly she's just doing the most people do people i hear um airbnb bad stories that people do the most wildest thing. you know people even steal tvs from airbnb you know <laughs> like there's a lot that happens with airbnb mm-hmm. but you don't hear airbnb saying okay this gender or this right race, right 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 you right, are right. done for you're not coming back on the platform we're done with you no they put certain things in place so that you know the business can continue to go forward right. and i feel like as she was, i feel like she was also putting a lot of emotions in her business because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. she's like oh i'm not gonna lose sleep or lose my peace for the business you know like oh i don't want to deal with this people because they're stressing me and as a business yeah. i can't be stressed but right. like it's a business if you need it to make money for you then you need i don't think you need to be that attached to it mm-hmm. no in peace. that if mm-hmm. one person is pissing you off then it's like oh no so if, let's say a family of african-americans comes through and they want to give her like a long term stay or something like that and they offer her huge money what is she going to do turn it down mm, mm. because she decided against one something like that can i just but say yeah. this real quick yeah. before we go to uh, out of brown or whoever else okay. number one um <clears throat> jamaicans are our closest uh and I mean, our closest group in the diaspora to african americans them and trinidadians mm. people from like the Domin- uh Domin- the caribbean the caribbean yeah because mm. we all we all came in the same we came to the new world and then if you look at their last names and our last names, it's the same situation. Yeah. And Jamaicans are probably pound for pound some of the most talented blacks on planet Earth. The influence in the world is crazy. And I'm also put this out there. If you from New York City, Philadelphia, Boston, African-Americans and Jamaicans was tearing up shit together. Mm-hmm. So as much as and a lot of the Jamaican and Caribbeans played a huge role, Caribbeans and look, Sydney Portier um was caribbean mm-hmm. so we had a lot of people in the civil rights um harry belafonte so a lot of caribbeans were in the african-american community and was somewhat ostracized but they still stuck it through mm-hmm. so they helped us develop so when we look at the caribbean community this has only been the last few years that we've been having some back and forth but hey, same thing with haitians mm-hmm. you know these are our people right more closer than any in any, any anybody. Yeah. So the situation is with, with with all of that is when you're dealing with black people, period, they can tear up your shit. Yeah. That's just how it is. I've met some people here in Uganda that you want to run from, but some of the <laughs> best people I've met have mm-hmm. helped me here. Yeah. yeah. Right? And it's 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 just, you know, we gotta look at what our people can do to help each other. Mm-hmm. Once you're trying to uh, clean up black people, I've noticed my brother told me this, George Macon. He said, black people, they're going to steal. They're going to lie. They're going to tear up your stuff. Yeah. That's the process we're going and we're building our people. So that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And trust me, it has happened to me. I can say, once that happened to you, you're on the right path. Mm-hmm. You got to get scammed first and robbed. <laughs> right? So mm-hmm. once you get that, welcome to the club. But um, yeah, I just want to put that out there. Go ahead. Yeah. I'd like to hear more from Tina because I feel like Tina, mm-hmm. Tina didn't say everything she wanted, no, guys. Um, Tina, would you like to turn up shit with Jamaicans in London? And then Rachel and Kuhani can say No, t- I love Jamaicans. I grew up. Did you I grew up anything in, over there? You, you I grew over? up in North London, so it was like heavy Caribbean influence. So mm-hmm. I feel like the things she said are very not Jamaican because I can't remember what the saying is, but they say something like from one person come many people or something like that. Mm-hmm. They're some of the most accommodating people ever. Oh, yeah. Even Jamaica itself is very like diverse in itself. So for her to say that it was very not Jamaican of her, Mm -hmm. but there was a part where she said, um, what did she say? She said, um, oh, they're spoiled because they've been given everything for free. I was like, what? (laughs) Like, (laughs) what? That was just very confusing to me. But that goes back to, I think, I don't know. I think it was you who said like, why do 
us as black people like to fight like amongst each other, mm -hmm. but it's a crabs in a barrel thing, isn't it? So mm -hmm. it's like, in order for one group to be here, another group has to be brought mm -hmm. here. So we do that a lot. And it's so irritating because we're genuinely the only group of people that do it. I never like hear Asian people bringing each other down to bring another sect up. Like I never hear other people, or like white people. Mm. I don't hear that. Maybe they have those conversations privately, but mm. we're the only ones that feel the need to have them publicly mm. for the rest of the world to now come in. It's like we want them to pick their favorite blacks. Like, <laughs> but honestly, it, it really is. And mm. it's like, yeah, so that disturbed me because I'm like, everything easy for free what yeah do, do, what does anyone yeah. get in gotta, america we're for gonna free? talk about that too that's, that's like what point. does anyone mm. actually get in america for free like well that's what mr local african here thought mr uh, original african don't they get some things for free like, like well, well let's talk about the perception what do you well, let's see the what perception. do you think yeah. we're gonna go to the our beautiful ladies over there but go ahead the perception, the perception uh, most africans think is that life is way much easier in, in in the states mm. as compared to, to Africa. That's why people think that if they're suffering here and they just make it to the states, all of a sudden their life is going to get much better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is that uh, perception. But yeah. I think the perception for most Ugandans, like he said, is that you, you life will be better in the states and mm -hmm. like you're giving so many so I many think free some things. Some sort of. But Benefit, huh? what we do know is that you guys, I think you get free education. Is it free education? They get free, free education, but the standard of the education. Oh. Ah, but the standard of the free, free education. <laughs> the well, but I we mean, also have free education here, but it's the same issue. The standard uh, of the free education. It's going to be higher than what I yeah. see that's here, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But it, but no, 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 well, the, the housing is going to be more expensive there, so the taxes is going to be... That's how we do it in the States. So mm. the more affluent the public school area is, the better the school will be because mm, you have true. more tax funding mm -hmm. versus some place like, I don't know, uh, Kawempe or... Yeah. 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 And also, the, 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 let's say... <laughs> at least there's some, there's some extra benefit in the state. For example, a classroom in the States, a, cl a, cl a classroom here in Africa mm. would be in a worse state. Oh, oh no. For sure. no, no, not well, necessarily. You can say that for for government education, UPE schools. What I'm trying to say, the but infrastructure there is better than here. No, but for what? black people, no, nice yes, say. it is. Yes, he's right. Typically, yes, yes, but there would be instances where you, you, have you, you can pick one. I promise you, Guys, you can find you one school Do over you know? there that wouldn't be better than a school over here, or vice versa. I think like you it's can. where you are. Yeah, I think you can. I went to. I went to a school, a high school by a very wealthy man. And if you can see the structure, amazing. When I was doing my intern in Gulu, do you know the type of structures they have there? You'd be surprised. Mm -hmm. But you know why that is? It's because they get a lot of funding sure, for schools. Sure, sure, sure. The schools look nice. So I don't, I don't, I don't agree with your statement. Maybe for a UPE but school in that village. The no, I definitely States. can't compare because yeah. the schools that look nice. To the United States? Yes. Yeah, because there are some schools. I haven't, I haven't been, Listen, I haven't been to there are some so schools you say. go to and you're like, where am I? Who even goes to this school? How much are they paying? Are they breathing in something Did different? you want to re-enroll? <laughs> <laughs> it's for, it's let's for let's kids. Let's it's like a kindergarten. Let's, let's see uh, what our... our uh, Kohani, I do not agree with what that lady says, but also sometimes you find as black people, we, tr we, we tend to lean towards our people when i say our people is in the sense that she's not gonna come and say it was it was black american jamaicans because mm -hmm. maybe they were but she's not gonna tell you that so she's gonna come and say oh black people from america mm -hmm. so you find like we tend to do that you know because janita is buganda and mm -hmm. i'm buganda yeah. now we are we have like a squad really yeah. thingy going on but yeah at the end of the day like this type of mentality of black people bringing down black people in the world. And I say in the world because it doesn't matter where you're from. As long as you're black and you're out there in the world, they will always see you as a black person. Mm. So for them bringing, bringing each other down like that, it does not benefit anybody because it trickles down all the way to things like politics. And even w when we look back, like sometimes I think like slavery, sometimes w we could blame the black people 
who are actually selling other black people mm. to white people. Mm. So we bring each other down to the point where we can't even grow. Mm. So, and even her saying that she doesn't even care about her business, it shows you like how ignorant somebody can go to the extent of being ignorant. So, yeah, it's it's messed up. Mm. So yeah. Thank oh you, yeah, O'Shea. There are better schools. Yeah. Go to schools like Bribbon. Go to schools like Brookhouse, where children are dropped off in helipads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm pretty sure, but they have that also in the states. I'm pretty sure too. Of course, yeah. Yeah. I understand. I understand. Yeah, yeah, if you're rich anywhere in the world, you're gonna have nice shit. Yeah, that's just the truth. But yeah. Brian yeah. said as classroom that is better than classroom. Yeah. I mean, on average, average, on average, on average, I would say uh. yes. On average, yeah. But then think about things like okay, so if we're talking because. We're talking about black people, yeah. right? Mm. So if you're talking about black people, like in the Western world, you have to look at like redlining, mm. right? So you talked about living in a good neighborhood to go to a good school, mm. but typically people of color were pushed out of those neighborhoods. Mm. Even in like rent culture, buying culture, they're still pushed out of those places. Mm. So that's what I'm saying. Like it could be either or. Yeah, I, I want to drop in a history fact as we mm -hmm. as we that go to get to something else you know how kampala kampala was designed by a, a german man so what happened was kololo is in the center it's like a circle then you go to the outskirts of kololo that's like kampala road and whatnot uh -huh. then it's kamocha you, you, you're seeing the mm -hmm. circle mm -hmm. so in the middle kololo there were the whites then the outskirts kampala road and whatnot had indians mm -hmm. and then the blacks were pushed to the slums like kamocha and whatnot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Red line yeah okay mm -hmm. that's it wow they do that everywhere yeah Anything Even in our racial? countries, you know. Jesus. Yeah, it went as far as having a stage, Kasasiro stage, like garbage stage, mm. like the Kamocha stage. It's like a whole wow. history behind it. Kampala was constructed in a racist way, designed yeah. in a racist way. Wow. But uh, Rachel, you want to say something? I just want to say, um, maybe the way she packaged it wasn't the best way, you know, with generalizing a whole race and all that mm -hmm. but she she had to call them out because i've been in uh i've managed a similar business before and i'll tell you people come in with all these manners mm -hmm. and they expect because of we are the same race the same race you'll tolerate it you know mm. what group of people were you were which, you um which <laughs> doesn't <laughs> Can I which, 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 which doesn't opinion. make it right yeah mm -hmm. but what what group of people were you dealing with that were doing it the most and when you're managing because mm. yeah, it wasn't african it wasn't black americans but who were you facing they, there were some of those and uh, nigerians and then asians oh my god mm. yeah but I'm just saying that some come with this mentality that, oh, yo, you know, it's a black business and it's also a black person, so I should get away with some of the things I'm doing because, well, uh, you should tolerate this, yeah? So mm. uh, for me, I, I think that she would have, like, packaged it better, much as we want to, you know, live in, in harmony and... As as uh, as black people like you know work collectively and all that, but mm. we also have to have respect for each mm -hmm. other and for people's businesses and other things. You don't think just because we have the same race, you should come with all your manners and I accept. Mm -hmm. it's, it's 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 a no, you know. So for her to have come out and call them out, she must have had it like mm. to About the neck, you know. And she came out and ranted and all that. Now, of course, the message kind of gets lost with the way she was dressed and everything because we lived in the a Nyasha. society that has... <laughs> that objectifies women. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So some are not yeah. even going to focus on the message, but they will focus on the way but she was dressed. But did she want us to focus exactly. on the message? Right. But, right. but she was wearing normal shorts, guys. But, but let's... So just bent but all over, though? But let's no, oh, shit, I'm going to say Go ahead, that. go ahead, Rachel. Yeah, <laughs> but, but let's... Uh, I know some of you on the podcast uh, business people like Koshe. I'm sure there are those points where you've had it and you really want to come at, come out and call these people and just make it like a whole people thing. Like mm -hmm. a, uh, like all Ugandans are like that, you know. Mm. But of course, hmm. but <laughs> yeah, but of Can course, it mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can it happen? Mm -hmm. But but of course, um, sometimes you don't want to run like that because you're like, well, it was this particular person and all that. Mm -hmm. But you still demand that respect as a business person for your business because sure. there are not there are things you're not going to tolerate. So, 
Uh, I see, I see, I, I could say I kind of see where she's coming from with the ranting and everything. Mm. But like I said, maybe the way she packaged it or came out and, you know, put out the communication, it kind of, like her, her, her message kind of gets lost in the stereotypes Stops. and mm-hmm. s- and objectifying her with the way she's dressed and everything. But yeah, it's, it's, let's have respect for uh, people's businesses mm. that's mm. what i would say mm. it it happens though yeah like, I, I mean i i, I can understand that because i was <laughs> we were staying at the because w- p- i met rachel staying at the place uh, yes right when uh before rachel became the manager so and we used to see across mm. we won't even mention the group but uh yeah we used to see what the you know making a lot of noise and stuff like that oh. mm. And then you could be easy to to generalize this particular group in Africa, which is quite popular, right? <laughs> um, and and it was it was it was it was them a lot. But I had I had known some of those. Yeah. Uh, you know. uh, sorry to interrupt yeah, you. It does happen that some of these people in Uganda who own these Airbnbs, they reach a time and they're like, I don't want this particular group of people. Mm to come to my apartments, you know, because it's too much. Of course, they're not going to come out and make like a public note or something like that. Mm-hmm. But you'll see the way they treat them when they come to book this Airbnb. They'll be like, oh, the, the rooms are fully booked. Oh, you know, it's it's not for rent. Like, they'll, they, they'll have excuses. They're not going to tell them directly because, well, I feel like we are not some, most of us do not confront, are not, co- we don't confront or we don't tell what exactly is happening. Mm-hmm. Like, we'll come up with this and that, but we won't tell you, oh, because it was so loud or because you destroyed the property or because Left we suspect TV. you to be, you know, mm-hmm. this and that. Yeah, because, um, but you will see the way they treat them and it's many people who have these issues, just that they don't come out on camera to talk about these things and, mm. you know, maybe generalize a, a, a whole race, which mm. is wrong. But you under when you see it happen, when you write into it, you understand where they're coming from with all this. Mm. Mm-hmm. And then if you put yourself in their shoes, you feel like I, w- I would also do the same if, if I was them. Maybe I would do it differently, but mm-hmm. I would put some measures and mm. boundaries for a certain group, not for not a group, but for a certain type of visitors, you know. Mm. Maybe you don't have to, like, stop a whole group because there's money to be made at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And usually such people pay a lot of money, you know, when they come to such places. So there could be, like, boundaries where, you're like, okay, as you, I am putting a red flag on you. The next time mm-hmm. you come, I'll not rent out my apartment to you because... I have dealt with you before and I know how you are, mm-hmm. but not stop like, okay, if it's all Americans coming, I'll, I'll stop black Americans coming. I'll stop with them because two people did this and that, you know? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Anyone else? So Go ahead, yeah, maybe what I want, where what I can emphasize is, uh, at the end of the day, our uh, business is business. Mm-hmm. You are bound to experience those challenges mm. at some point. I don't think the right way is to start blaming because trust me, if you start blaming, everyone is to get involved, then we shall have total chaos. When a white man comes to Africa and finds a weird experience and goes out blowing, uh-huh. even a black man will go to there and you'll find chaos, he also blows on the internet. So everywhere we shall be. So we, uh, I think it's better we explore other avenues. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whenever such issues are, rather than ranting on social media, I don't even know if she went viral. <laughs> you don't well, you know. See, you see okay, <laughs> apart from the nyash, because uh, no, not the nyash. I think it was like because she was smart. Like in terms of like from from a marketing point of view, mm-hmm. what she did was smart because she took you around the whole time right, she was complaining. Right. She took you around the venue. Yeah. You saw what she had to offer. You mm-hmm. saw that the beach was just next by, and then obviously there's a beautiful woman in the shot. Like she ticked all the marketing mm-hmm. boxes. She didn't so went now swimming. everyone, yeah, everyone except African Americans mm-hmm. are probably gonna try and book the place. Mm-hmm. But I just think. She could have, sh- the video could have still had the same effect if she had just told a story time of the two particular guests exactly. and said what they did, mm. you know, maybe like make it sound a bit more chaotic. Mm. The video would have still had the same effect. So I d- don't know why she had to make it an attack on a group of people again, based off of two people's actions, <coughs> right, like exactly. two human beings. And also 
we're doing this devil's advocate thing, which I understand, but white people do this all the time on Airbnb, mm. right? Like I've had to <clears throat> book Airbnbs for like my black friends, black male friends, because typically white people don't rent out to black males. Like not once, not twice, but a few times. Every time like my black male friends have had to like come to London and they're trying to get an Airbnb, I have to book it. Because really? Of, yeah, because they're more likely to accept it even off of me than them. And even then, I've still been rejected by some Airbnbs just because I'm black. And there's cases of black people literally going to check into their Airbnbs in the UK and being turned away and told, oh no, like basically they, they won't say it, but I didn't know you were black. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry, I can't <laughs> let you stay. And like, I think I heard a story about a couple that it happened to and it was really late at night. They couldn't get anywhere but they were legit turned away and all Airbnb did was refund them. So the moment we start to now okay it, even amongst ourselves, then white people are gonna be like, well, then there's no problem when we do it too. Mm -hmm. I just think as, as a business, yeah, as a business, you should find a vetting type of process, right. whether it's like on a previous stay basis, like what Rachel said of block those particular people, that's fine, but to make it a general thing, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just very weird. Yeah, that's a great it's point. Anti -black. It's anti-blackness. <laughs> let me let me um I'm let me just let me say this to, to build on that point, right? Okay. Um, you know, me being here in in Uganda, and I and we even have a podcast about this with um, it's one of our most popular episodes. Why the diaspora is separating from the local community oh. in certain aspects, and that's. Not so much different from what the lady is saying, although she's saying, like, okay, no black Americans allowed. That's pretty much what she's saying, right? And then in, um, in, in the case of what we were talking about in that episode is, okay, we have, like, to put these measures in place so that things don't go bad, you mm -hmm. know? Like, we need to kind of control as much of things that we can control to make sure that for, you know, like if we have an event or if we have, um, you know, in the business that things get done so we don't have problems. I think those are two different things. And, um, you know, because you don't want to get to the point where I'm missing an opportunity for somebody that can change my life. Because you have black people out there that will just go to bat for you. I mean, uh, we met some nice people that came to our event, you know, and... Um, mm -hmm. One lady was, uh, shout out to her, she came, like, she had just came back from Norway. One guy was from Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. And they came, they, w they were buying things, you sold us some, uh, sold us some shirts. Yeah. Yeah, so what if you come on and say, like, oh, you got it, you can't deal, and then these are the people that want to help you, you know? So a lot of people, I want to say this in the, in the black world, will help you mm -hmm. a lot. Jamaicans, African Americans, Ugandans, Nigerians, like, look at the people who have offered to help our podcast where we can do things now that we couldn't do five, four, five, four or five months ago. Mm -hmm. We're not in a position to even sustain this and we're able to make a profit because who are supporting us? Our people support us, right? Everything that we get is from our people support what we do. So we don't have that mindset in the, in the world where, Oh, you know, those people over there, those people over there, At the same time, the white man moving right into the black community in London he moving into gentrified things and moving it over here and gentrifying Mutongo. Like I was hearing from brother Greg said, listen, when I first, he said, I first came to Mutongo, it was like five blacks out of every 10. He said, now it's like damn near two blacks for every eight people. Mm -hmm. Now, while you talking about, you can't work with these people, the white man coming right, it right underneath your ass. And he going and getting everything. When, you know, we have the opportunity to look at what earn your leisure is doing. I was talking about that before the podcast starts. Yeah. These guys are, have, have created some of the best financial vehicle I've seen on social media ever connecting people that would never talk to each other and doing some great things. But they've done that because they don't have that stigma that that group, and they're working with everybody. DeVito, they're working with uh, Afro Cello people. Mm -hmm. These are African-American guys. They're working with all the diaspora. Yeah. Look at what they're achieving. And we are here, some of us stuck on foolishness, and you're not going anywhere. Yeah. When if we were doing that, man, look at where we would be. You know? So. Yeah. Well, that's well said, and I feel like we should end the episode here. You always say it when I say something, <laughs> but you already have <laughs> No. It's actually really nice. Um, I feel like um, the viewers really like what you have to say. But yeah, guys. Um, guys, tell the people where they can find you. Miss Tina. Oh, Tina Graham on Instagram. Okay. 
Yeah, outer brand everywhere. Or you see a brand, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Okay. It's not original African at no, original right. African <laughs> two five six. Backup. That's, that's a backup page. <laughs> 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 Funny. But yeah, O'Shea. Uh, at O'Shea, do, um, I just wanted to say we want to thank um people who came out to the event. I think I'll put the picture of me and the brother. I think his name was Steven. I'm not sure if I have the right name. He ain't messaging me. Yeah. But he's living in Abu Dhabi. Uh, we met a lot of people. I left a, I left the event a little early. Yeah. But it was people that recognized Superstar Tina, Superstar mm. Jonita. And we didn't really promote it so much yeah. um, on the channel, just maybe like two weeks. But it was it was packed because we had another uh, person helping us, another group. Not lots of connection. Pam, thank you so much. Mm. We had a nice event. We had um, the, some melodic drums ensemble. Shout out to Castle de Roy for hosting us. We mm. had the photo booth 360. We had um, Cocktail City doing the mixology. Yeah. And uh, was it was a, even even Mr. Original African came through. Nice pull up with nice yeah. Pull up so with we you. thank you for <laughs> for um, for fellowshipping with us. You know, hopefully. We will have our own podcast live event before the end of the year, mm. and uh, we'll get to meet you meet you very very soon. Yeah, yeah. Thank mm. you guys once again. Um, so so many of you came through. I think because you watch the podcast. Obviously, you do watch the podcast. Um, you said hi to us. You took some pictures. You gave us some compliments. You also gave us some critics criticism and what did. Well, one person did. <laughs> He's like, who fine. did? <laughs> <laughs> but it's fine. It's oh wait, wait wait wait! Before I forget, yeah. Shout out to Value Farm. Oh yeah, uh, Tina and Greg over Value Farm. They came and they did the the, the meat, meat for us. Yeah, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't think that Greg was gonna be able to do it at that level. I was yeah. like, and, and no, like the Value Farm, they really people are still talking about how good that food was. So yeah, that guy's amazing. So shout out to shout out to to Greg. Yeah, yeah. shout out to everyone who came through. Everyone, every one of you was special. Also, shout out to my clients who also came through for the event. Um, I do appreciate you all. But yeah, guys. How many? How many came through? Stop. Only one, but like they're the ones that <laughs> they're in the country. Oh yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, the because they Kansas moved. Yeah, yeah, so because they moved. Beautiful family. Yeah. Like, yeah, very beautiful. They have the cutest babies, the cutest, the chubby chicks. Anyway, let me not get off track. Tina was there. <laughs> oh yeah, I was there. Tina was looking what, what gorgeous. What did you think of the I was. I had fun. I was really drunk. It was lit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Also, no, Brian was, was there with his security detail. Yeah, the whole gang of. So high and it was fun. <laughs> you can say that. Talk, talk on the mic. Huh? I was like high, full of happiness. Oh, okay. oh, oh. oh. Hey. not yeah. drugs. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? I was not thinking high from what. <laughs> but yeah, guys, um, thank you so much. Um, yeah, we'll just end this here. Um, reach out to us at Kengana Nation. Shout out to our audience, um, Kohani and Rachel. We appreciate you. Follow the Pan African Dating Show. If you want some shirts, guys, reach out to us on Instagram, and I'll make sure they get delivered to you. Yeah, guys, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.